Yeah, so we're still talking football, top flight football in the land of Wood of Water. That's Jamaica returning this Sunday with a rare nephew Jamaica Premier League for the second consecutive season. The league will have 14 teams, including defending champions Mount Pleasant, fellow St. Anne team Lime Hall, along with Treasure Beach from St. Elizabeth, are the two newly promoted teams. These are the round one matchups. Let's have a look at them now. Lime Hall Academy against Montego Bay United. That will be live on Sportsmax. Trevor, Treasure Beach, Treasure Beach against Humberland. Tivoli Gardens against Waterhouse. Mount Pleasant tackling Portmore. That's the reigning champions against the seven-time champions. That's live on Sportsmax. And on Sportsmax 2, Veer United against Malines. Arnett Garns will tackle Dumbra Holden on Sportsmax 2 as well. Round one matches coming up in the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League starting this weekend. CEO of Professional Football Jamaica Limited, Owen Hill, is with us in studio to talk more about the upcoming season. Well, we did, uh, Owen, have the launch and we saw the presentations from yourself and other executives. Um, we are on the eve now of the tournament kicking off. How excited are you? Um, well, first, let me say thanks for having me. <laughs> I think... Um, I'm a little bit, you know, anxious, nervous. I feel like I'm playing, actually. Um, <laughs> when you have played, you have played in the past. When was it? 2015? Right. For UWI? Yeah, for UWI. Um, but, you know, normally, just a little bit, you know, hours before the kickoff, generally you have these jitters. But once, you know, you go live, then, you know, all of that goes all the way. Literally, we're in the final stages of preparation, ensuring that all the teams are, um, you know, set, accommodated, essentially. And, you know, looking at what is to come, we've been having those discussions from an activation perspective with our major partners, the new title partners. Um, we'll be moving into Jacksaw pretty much starting tomorrow, setting up, ensuring that, you know, all things are on the ground and um, doing what is right. And the necessary PR and, you know, information is out there um, to ensure that the, the, the viewing public and the people who are willing to come to the game which we are saying you should, um, they're, they're in for a treat. I think it's going to be a, a fantastic opening weekend. All right. About the season itself, now, and the fact that a lot of the games will be going back to the communities and uh, the home teams now having an opportunity in their own space to welcome big crowds and so on, which uh, that format had been moved away from, from the COVID 2021 season with more centralized locations. How embracing is this for the home teams now, now that a lot of them will have the opportunity to be hosting matches in their own space? I think they're excited. I mean, from last season, you saw that we were transitioning into um, the community. Um, let us not be, you know, crazy about this, but football is the community. Most of the teams are community-related teams, you know. They're, they're nestled in communities. So bringing back the um, sport to the actual facilities that they have in their community, I think it does them a world of good. And, you know, what helps is that, you know, some of these community venues are actually very good venues. Yes. You know, so when you look at the teams that are going to be participating in the competition and where they'll be playing their home games, I think it augurs well for community development, for club development, um, and by extension, just the general vibe and atmosphere that you'd want from um, any football game. Yes, yeah, speaking about development, I instantly thought about the newly promoted teams, Treasure Beach and Lime Hall. Yeah. What are you expecting from these two teams for this new season? Well, let me, let me put on my, my analyst hat now. Yes, please. <laughs> Um, from a Treasure Beach perspective, I think they're very solid structurally. Um, they've, they've, they've got the right pieces and they went shopping. Um, I mean, I recently spoke to their coach, Omar Wedderburn. He's no stranger to, you know, top flight football and, you know, having this kind of pressure being put on him. But, I mean, he's quite comfortable. He's ready. Um, there's an infusion of, you know, players who would have played in the league. Um, and then you, new and young talent that he would have had through the St. Elizabeth Technical program. So I think that's a good merger. Um, and the fact that, you know, Treasure Beach is from St. Elizabeth on that southern belt, probably 
you know, the only team that spans across Manchester, St. Elizabeth, um, Westmoreland. I think it gives them a nice mix of players um, and it augurs well for their programme. For Lime Hall, on the other hand, yeah. um, they, I believe, have benefited from some of the spillovers from Mount Pleasant, you know. So yeah. I, I think with, you know, as having... Neighbors, some, as yeah, neighbors. They're yeah. neighbors. So, yeah. I mean, they're good neighbors, by the way. They share, you know, a lot of resources. <laughs> so um, the pitch itself, they're going to be using Draxall um, and they have a good, you know, nice mix of players. Some of the players who would have helped them qualify, um, they're still there, but they've, they've refreshed the team, rejuvenated um, what is considered... The, the, the squad expected to compete and I, I'm looking forward to what they have to offer in the league because I feel like you know these two teams if they hold their own which I think they will they'll cause some damage yeah in your response to Lance just now about the preparations you spoke about activations and for me whenever I see Ray and nephew anyway yeah it's a party and it's a big deal <laughs> because they come out really really big yes. right what, are, what is in store for us? Because I already plan to attend some of these JPL <laughs> matches, although I will not be on the broadcast. Right. So what will Ray and Nephew have for me? Well, I can tell you, Ray and Nephew is excited about being this, um, you know, title partner. They, they, they'll be coming to the party, literally bringing the party yes. um, to, the, to, to the game. I can tell you, I mean, all the, the excitement that you expect in a general entertainment space, yes. they'll be bringing it to football. Because football is entertainment. So um, you'll have those deals at the venues. Um, but prior to, you'll have community activation. So they'll be hitting up, you know, the bars and the local spots and ensuring that if you purchase, they'll have bucket deals, they'll have ticket deals. Um, and then at the game, you'll have, you know, prizes and surprises. They'll ensure that the fans are engaged from minute one or probably before the game start until after the game. And I think with their product... Um, it, 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 it only helps to enhance. It, 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 <laughs> You're choosing your words carefully, but go, yeah. go ahead, Brady. It, it, it enhances the vibe that you will have at these games. And I think, you know, the patrons are in for a treat, um, but we're always saying that it's a family-oriented event. So, you know, drink responsibly, and we're always pushing that. Yeah, looking forward. <laughs> yeah, so happy to hear all of that, right? So I have said this a number of times on the show that I am not, the biggest fan of the format okay um, just because i think the team that is most consistent over six or seven months should be rewarded but i understand okay. why it is the way it is and clearly based on how the season ended last year it worked because the playoffs have been massively successful the turnout for the championship match cavalier and mont pleasant fantastic um, cannot forget that how do we build on how we ended last season um, and take that through an entire campaign and not just when we get to the playoffs of this um, tournament competition? Because I think it showed last year that there is tremendous value in the Jamaica Premier League. I, 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 again, I have to piggyback on what you're saying because the truth is it depends on where you sit philosophically. Yes. Um, if you're looking for a league format, seven, eight months long worth of football, race to the top, who is at the top, wins the entire thing. Um, that There's merit to that argument. However, because of the nuances in the Jamaican space um, and the partners that we have on board, we want to give them maximum value. Yes. So what we've done is, you know, pretty much looked at the best practices globally and, you know, decided that, hey, we want you to continuously play good football throughout the season. Um, you will be getting some kind of reward incentive-wise at the end of the regular rounds, but then the, the, the cherry on the top is winning the Premier League. Truth be told, um, I mean, the bigger cherry is actually qualifying for these CONCACAF games. Yeah. Um, so when you look at what Cavalier and Harbourview is now doing in the Caribbean um, Cup yeah. and how they've advanced, they're in the semi-final playing against each other. Um, when you look at how they've revamped that structure, when you get to the top, you're really just looking around to say, how can we maximize? Yeah. Yes, we want to, you know, add more value to it so that you can have a bigger price purse at the end of it, etc. But we want to also keep the fans engaged. And we know that in Jamaica, um, we like that short snap, you know, yeah. in moment 
kind of vibe and it will allow for good football because again he get amped up when he know that hey this is a do or die situation yeah just on a point of clarity did arnett gardens get um rewarded for their regular season title last year and what was the nature of the reward so so they didn't get a, a, a cash incentive or yes. they didn't get a trophy reward yes um but Going forward, this is a part of the okay. arrangement. Okay, so, because so, I remember Tiga Davis complaining as a coach last year that yes. they were regular season champions, top the league format, and there wasn't anything for them. Correct. And, and, and the truth is they, they knew this from before. Yes, you know, I, so, I, you know. so, so let me ask you, what will be in it this season for yeah. the team that wins the regular season? So we've not decided as yet, okay. you know, totally. Of course, you know, a trophy is definitely there. Um, but again, you know, a team probably wants to get more than just a trophy. So we're looking at different ways, permutation, how it can work. Um, probably you could get some qualifiers um, from the, you know, the two teams that are most consistent, depending on the nature of these things. But you know the process you have to go through, um, submit what you think is the approach, the rational fight, and then there's justification for it going forward. Um, but again, we are mindful that we need to incentivize people who do well. Yes. You know, we don't want you to finish six for argument's sake, and then you just soup the league, and then that's it, you know. <laughs> uh, but that's a good Cinderella story for anybody as yeah. well. So it makes for good kind of television, I think. Yes. Um, and I think the teams are really hungry for that. In terms of the influx of overseas players, um, it's not new to see players from the rest of the Caribbean playing in the Jamaica Premier League. But looking at what I'm seeing now, maybe we have more non-Jamaicans who will be playing in the league than we've ever had before. Um, how much will that bring to the JPL, you think? So, let me, let me answer your question by saying I think Sportsmax benefits heavily from that. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking the benefit. Yes, I think. But I think, I think we helped you get those players. No, for sure. Of course. You're, you're our preferred partner. We love you. I think you enhance the whole product. But what I'm saying is when you have, because the games are being broadcasted in over 26 Caribbean territories, both, yeah. you know, um, locally and then, you know, it, it's in the tri-state area and in Canada. Canada and all these places, you have more eyes on the product. Yeah. I mean, I, I give you a basic, well, not a basic, but I give you a very strong example of Trevante Stewart. His last game was in the Premier League, yeah. local Premier League, and his next professional game was in Italy. Yeah, totally. you know, and, and we're told no scouts came here to see him. Pretty much, no scouts. And, and what enhances that is being able to watch broadcasted games, being able to analyze these games yeah. virtually, um, and then you can make a decision on the player. So... To, to, to really answer the question is, yes, we'll have more eyes on the product because you have more Caribbean players coming in. Yeah. Um, but then, hands down, we have the best league in the Caribbean, and it is proven. There's a ranking by CONCACAF that speaks to where the leagues rank across the Caribbean. Jamaica is the number one league in the Caribbean, and everybody's looking at the league and saying, yes, this is a good launching pad. It helps to catapult my career. Um, and the quality of the play is really, really strong. So, I mean, you can't argue against that. Yeah, I also want to make the point, because quite often when we speak about the views um, for Sportsmax and we speak about the rest of the Caribbean and Canada, um, tri-state areas, of course, I don't think we realize um, how many eyes we actually have in the UK. There you go. Um, and I think we underestimate that. And through the Sportsmax app and uh, an event like the Jamaica Premier League, where it is not geo-blocked and anyone right across the world can watch, we get a, a number of views coming out of the UK. So that's a, a big deal there as well. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of, you know, augment what you're saying, we, we at the JPL ensures that the players understand that, you know, you're not just playing in front of, you know, 1,500 people Everybody's when you get up, you know, every Sunday or Monday. This is a global event that you have access to or people have access to you globally. So every time you suit up, every time the cameras are on, you are playing for not just yourself, but the opportunity to expand the league and people looking at players. So um, I think it's very, very important for us to underscore that point that the league has grown significantly. Um, we're building an industry and there are many different elements of a football industry. Yeah. Um, broadcast is one. 
you know, apparel is another. Ensuring that people come to the game is another. You know, watching it on television is another. So there, there are so many elements that we're looking to build out and we're saying, if you don't support local sports through the different avenues, then chances are we're going to always be looking internationally and asking, why can't we be like that? Yeah, I'm not sure you can answer this yet, but I'm going to put it out there just the same. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. So you, you speak about building an industry, right? And clearly the Jamaica Premier League has gotten more support locally in recent years. But with the influx of more overseas players and um, eyes all over the world on the Jamaica Premier League, when do we start to engage, um, strategically engage overseas partners? And by partners, you mean... We have I could use sponsors. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, we have global sponsors. So, for example, MasterCard is one of our global partners that you know we have tagged to Montego Bay United. Um, Montego Bay United has recently changed hands. The button has been passed to you know a, an international partner for want of a better word because even though he's locally or they are locally um, orchestrating their businesses, they have global reach. Yes. Um, so you know the opportunities are there. We we keep having those kinds of discussions um, but we have to keep building the brand value so that people can see. You know, and I think we've done that for the last um, three, four years. We've moved from a situation where games were all centralized and, you know, locked up in one space. We got good enough coverage for that. And then as we dive deeper back into the communities, you know, we're expanding the overall product. And, uh, you know, we are saying sustainably expanding it because it's easy for us to just, you know, meander to all the necessary voices that come. Yeah. But if you want to build a product, if you want the clubs to be better, um, we have to take this approach, and I think that's that's working for us right now. Yes. Yeah, and, and quickly before we go, because I gather we're running out of time, is everybody happy with the 14-team league? Everybody. <laughs> if everybody is happy with the 14-team league. Um, different stakeholders are, you know, sitting on different sides of the fence. Yeah. Um, what I can say from a PFJL's perspective is that we are very clear, um, less is better, because you want to sustainably host you know, quality football games. Um, so we know the situation. If it is that we had, you know, 14 Mount Pleasants in the league, then fine, yeah. you know, yeah. it would be fine. But the truth is um, we have some clubs that are, you know, lower on the, the learning curve than others. Yeah. Um, and we're saying we're trying to build that industry. So as it is now, we, we have to work with the 14. Yeah. Um, and we keep building. What's okay. the ideal number for the PFJL? Ideal number. You're putting me on the spot, though. Um, I think someone said 10 sometime. <laughs> no, said I, 10 I, some I time ago. You, um, you're a goalkeeper. You're good at saving. <laughs> no, he's a, central, he's a central defender. I, I would say, you know, the ideal number is dependent on the, the quality of the teams that are in it. So there's really no magic number, to be very honest. And, and I'm being very honest. There, there, there's not a magic number. We're not pulling anything out the hat. Yeah. Um, if we have 14 solid clubs that can be self-sustainable then we're fine. We're good with that. But as it is no, we don't have that. So we're not saying to cap it at 10 or 12. Yeah. Yeah. We are saying let us expand sensibly yeah. um, because we're building a football industry. Yeah. yeah. I think the fact is Chapleton, Maroons and Falkland, um, the 13th and 14th teams from last season weren't, it doesn't help. weren't, yeah, weren't, weren't up to mark. <laughs> but, uh, and they got relegated. And they got so, relegated. You know, so hopefully, when, yeah, when Treasure ball. Beach and... Lime Hall, Lime Hall. Yeah. which is why I was happy to hear you say, for example, that Treasure Beach has a good system no, and structure. Both of them have a good real you yeah. know, system and yeah. structure, and I, I, I look forward to what they offer. I know it's yeah. a long league, yeah. it gets a while, you know, but we're looking forward to what they have they're, to offer. They're playing All the right. music, Lance. Yeah, <laughs> well, we, 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 we've got to go. Um, uh, let's see the non-Jamaicans and how they perform. Melvin Doxon has played three um, seasons in football in Jamaica. He's from St. Lucia. He has already won two titles, one with Cavalier and one with Mount Pleasant. So um, I get that story in itself is a story that will invite a lot of uh, other Caribbean players to be in the Jamaica Premier League. And uh, don't forget, there's JPL action coming up on Sportsmax this weekend. Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2. Back with more after this.